Hey y'all and welcome to Moner's Market and welcome to my rustic shabby chic primitive home decor video. I am so happy to be back. I have missed you guys the past few weeks so I'm not even going to mess around. I'm going to jump right into my video. Let's get into DIY number one. For DIY number one I'm making these four by four pumpkins that I adore. I went to Home Depot and I see this. I wish I'd have taken a picture of it. It's this big um, thing that you put wood on and push, and it's all spray-painted purple everywhere. And I'm like, what the heck is all that spray-painted purple for? It was free. And then you have this garbage can right here, and it has all this wood in there that's like for free. If you want it, you can have it, which they're just going to throw it away. So I had them start cutting it down into these little pieces. The only thing I paid for was this piece right here right there that I'm pointing at, and I went ahead and made the marks for him where I wanted them cut at so that he could keep cutting on that big, long, that thing was like 12 foot long, and I got so many sets of these 4x4 posts that I can make so many different things from, and I really like this piece of wood, but then I've seen that it has this like ridge on the bottom, so I haven't used that one yet, but I know there's something I can do with it. So here's a set of them all cut up. And as you can see, there's like the purple on it. And I love that it's not perfect wood. Well, what happens is when it's not perfect and it has those big dents and stuff in it, they don't, they can't sell it anymore. So they put all this purple spray paint everywhere and they try to mark it down to like 70%, 90%. Well, then people don't buy it. So then they're like, oh, well, here, just take it. So when I seen that big old long piece, I was like, heck yeah, I'll take it. So I tried to take a hand sander and get the paint off and it wasn't budging. So I really didn't think this white Waverly chalk paint that I'm using was going to cover it up, but it took one coat. That was all it took was one coat. So what I did is I just put one coat over the top of the purple and I let it set overnight to dry because I felt like if I started painting that I was just going to pull the paint back off of it and you would not be able to, uh, I wouldn't be able to cover up the purple, right? But when I came back the next day and started painting again, it was great. Like it was perfect. I'm glad I did it like that because I didn't pull any paint up. You couldn't see through it. And I was able to paint all of my little post. Now, you can't really tell it here. It almost looks like I'm giving it a full coat of paint, but I'm not. I am giving it a heavy coat, but I'm giving it a heavy distressed coat. Like I don't want all of the wood covered up. I do want some of it showing through. And the reason I do that is because if I were to cover... Sorry about that interruption. My phone rang and it cuts off my recording whenever I'm doing my voiceover. Anyway, if I were um, to cover it all up, all I'm going to do is distress it back down anyway and start taking it off where I can show some of that wood, right? Which is what I used to do. And then I was like, wait, well, you need to work smarter, not harder, right? So I was like, why even cover it up if you're going to take it back off? So I give it all three a distressed coat of paint. And then you can get these little stems at the Dollar Tree. Now, these I did get a couple of years ago, but they always, like at mine do here in Florida anyway, they have them every year. And I have like six bags of these things. So anyway, I just found a little stem for each of them and I hot glued it with my wood glue. If you're new to my channel, I nine times out of 10 I'm going to use wood glue hot glue instead of regular hot glue because it has the strongest hold, like it's it's like screwing something down. It's really, really, really sturdy. Now, all three of these ribbons that I'm taking to make my little messy bows all came from the Dollar Tree. All three of them did. And you can get these particular three anytime year round at my Dollar Tree. I was going to wrap it around the little stem and I was like, no, I didn't cut it long enough. So while all I did was just tied up a knot right in the middle because I wanted it like a messy bow, tied a knot right in the middle and just glued it to the front of my pumpkin. After I did that, it was still missing a little something. So I made myself a little finger bow, which is where you wrap twine around your four fingers, like, I don't know, seven or eight times, depending on how thick you want it. Like you can keep going 
you can make it thin or you can make it thick. But you wrap it around your finger several times, and then you just tie another piece of twine right in the middle, and that's all there is to making it. Well, after I'd done that, I was like, you know what? I think it would look cute to have some beads hanging from it. So I took the twine, and I put three beads on each end, and I tied. You have to tie it like three or four times because that hole's so big. If you don't make like a really big knot, then it's just going to fall off the end of it. And then what you see me doing right here is just fraying the end piece that I have left hanging and making sort of like a little tassel, if you will, with the with the twine. Just You just take it and you just untwist and untwist and untwist each little piece, and it just frays out. It's kind of cute. And then instead of gluing it on there, I just wrapped it around it a couple of times and just let it hang, and that's all there was to it. And they were finished, and I thought they turned out so stinking cute. Le <clears throat> Excuse me. My goodness. Let me know down in the comments what you think about my little 4x4 four four pumpkins. They are very primitive, very plain, and that's kind of what I want to do with today's video. Now, you can put rub-on transfers on here. You can paint them pink and purple for all I care. Like, make it you. Make it what, what's going to fit your decor. But you guys know me. I love the shabby chic, simple, sort of rustic, primitive vibe and this I love. I think these turned out super cute. They turned out really exactly like I wanted them to turn out and I'm super happy with the way they look. So let me know down in the comments what color would you paint yours? Would you do the traditional orange and you could put stripes and maybe some circles? Let's get into DIY number two. I apologize for my throat. I picked up a little head cold while we were gone and I know you can probably hear it in my snotty voice. <laughs> so this right here was a one by four by six. This was a better piece of the poplar wood. So I paid, I think like six or seven dollars for that piece. But when he cut it down, I ended up getting, I think like four sets of these out of um, the one piece of wood. So I'm going to go in with my antique wax. And if you guys don't know what antique wax is, which if you watch my channel, you know I'm obsessed with antique wax. <laughs> you take it, it's by Waverly, and you wipe it onto your raw wood, and then once you get it on there, then you take a baby wipe or a towel or something like that, and you wipe it back off. Now, if you use a towel or a wash rag or something, you're going to have to use it for crafting from then on because it won't, it won't, well, even though this is water-based, you probably could, it, it might wash out. I don't know. You know, I'm sitting here saying it won't. I've never tried because it's just got this stuff all over it. So I've never tried to wash them. You may be able to wash it out because this is water-based. Anyway, I keep mine and use them for rags and I use them over and over and over. But I have found that I like baby wipes the best. So you put your antique wax on. And then you take a baby wipe and you wipe it off and it brings through the most beautiful wood grain. Like you can see the wood grain on that piece to the left there that I haven't painted yet. But when you put this wax on and wipe it off, you can really, really see it. Now what I'm sanding right there is where the little sticker was. It still had a little bit of sticky and the antique wax was not wanting to stick to it. But look at that piece right there. Once I put that antique wax, how it brings those knots out and it just brings out the beauty of that wood. If you are new to my channel, I am obsessed with raw wood and turning it into something like, I have several videos, especially in the past year, where I've made things with raw wood. Like, if I could just have a channel where all I worked on was raw wood, I would be happy because I love working with it. So, after I let this dry overnight, I come back with my white Waverly chalk paint. And again, I'm giving it a distress coat. Now, why did I put the antique wax under this but not the other? Because I wanted a darker wood under this particular sign or these particular signs. The other one was cute, but it wanted more a primitive look, which is more of the uh, natural colors, right? The neutral colors. So once I got them painted, I pull out this stencil from Chalk Couture. I don't think this one is still available because this is from last year. 
but I know they have something very, very similar to this right now, and I will link it in my description box below. These are the two colors that I were going to choose from, my Pesto, which you guys know I love, and then our um, Bark, which is our brown, and I ultimately went with the brown. Now, these things are scored where you can cut each one of them into make their own little stencil, but I did it the lazy way, and I just pulled it back and put my board on there and stenciled it right on top of it. <laughs> Don't ask me why I did that. I had just come back from being gone for several weeks, and I was tired, exhausted, but I did want to get some content out for you guys because I've been gone for the last three weeks, and I was missing you guys, and hopefully you were missing me too. So I just take my bark paste and wipe right over the top of it. Now, when I went to wipe it off a little, I did put a baby wipe under it to keep it from getting on my backing right there. So, I went through and I put fall on one of them, gather on the other one, and grateful on the other one to just give my little boards a little fall vibe. And they're just little stand-up pieces of board. You'll see how I do it in just a minute. And I love this chalk couture guys it is so easy to use you see you put your board under there you put your stencil on top and you rub your paste on and then you have the most beautiful design and it's so stinking easy to turn anything into a high-end piece of decor and i love it like i love the chalk couture in my description box with every single video, whether I use Chalk Couture or not in that video, I always have my link so that you can go in and buy different things. Look around. You might see a, a um, stencil that you are crazy about for Christmas or whatever. They have just come out with their Christmas line, and I mean, it is gorgeous. The things that they have come out with this year are, as always, absolutely beautiful. So once I got all of my designs on top of my boards, I took my blow, my uh, heat gun, and I just gave it a little spray, not a spray. Hang on, let me get my thought together. Y'all, I just came back from being gone for three weeks. I am exhausted, and my mind is literally, like, not even cooperating with me to talk right now. <laughs> I blowed the stuff dry. Blew it dry. See? Blowed, blew. I mean, I can't even talk right. Anyway, I dried my paste so that I could move on and keep going and not have to stop. <laughs> anyway, I made these little bows and you get this ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and it has little pieces, little pictures of cotton on there. And I thought it was super cute, especially for fall. But once I got them on there and had it made, I was not happy with it at all. But I am going to go ahead and finish it with this particular um, ribbon and show it to you. But then I'm going to actually go back and take that ribbon off because I just... Every time I walked past it, I was not happy. So I did take some twine and wrap it two or three times around the edge of each of these little boards just to give it a little bit more character and, you know, add a little bit something, something to it. So, like I said, I went through with this um, cotton ribbon and finished them off. And then when I was at the store dropping my granddaughters off a couple of months ago, I saw, and I'm going to show them to you in just a minute, these little round beads, and they're used for some sort of little, like, blowgun or whatever, where you put these little, they're wood, they're made out of wood, they're very, very light, like, I couldn't imagine they would hurt anything, but when I seen them, I did not see ammunition, I saw crafting material, <laughs> so I bought, like, every single pack that they had in the store that day. And I think they had like 20 of them. And I come walking out and my husband's like, what do you have in that bag? Because the bag was like full of these little packs of these little round wood balls. Here they are. There's no hole in them. You know, most little round balls have the hole in them 
for beads. Well, these didn't, and I was always, like, I'm always looking for a little round bead that doesn't have a hole in it. So when I found them, there are so many things that I could use them for. I grabbed every single one of them. And that is the same store that we drop our grandkids off when we when we go get our Georgia babies, we meet halfway. So every time I go back now, I'm going to be looking for those beads because I've never seen them anywhere else. I'm sure I could probably Google it and find them, but they were only 99 cent a pack. So I got all of them. I think they, I don't know, maybe 20 packs. I don't know, but I got all of them. Anyway, this is how these turned out the first go round. And they were kind of cute. You know, I think if I would have had something that this cotton ribbon would have matched, then, eh, you know, it was okay. But it wasn't what I was looking for. It sort of took from that primitive rustic design by having that print on the ribbon. And even though it was kind of cute, I just was not happy. Like I said, I set them there for a couple of days. And every time I walked by them, I was like, yeah, no, that's got to go. Like, I do not like the ribbon don't like the little bead right there. I love those little beads, but I just wasn't happy with it. So I ended up taking them back and taking the ribbon off. Now, when you use this hot glue, it is stuck what you would think forever. Like it's so hard to take something off that has already been glued with that. But I did get an idea to heat the glue back up and see if I could remove it, and I did. I was not able to remove it at all without heating it up. So once I heated it up a little bit, I was able to remove those ribbons and take them right off. And the only thing I did to replace it is I got my twine and made myself some little finger bows, and that did two things. It matched my first set, and I'm going a little slower here to show you how to make a finger bow. I did it so fast in the first ones, like I was like, there's no way they seen what I just done. So here I'm slowing it down to show you how to do it. I wish I'd have been in frame a little bit better though. If you're like me and you film, when you're in the middle of crafting, you literally forget you're filming. And sometimes I'll pull things too close to me and I'm not even in the frame. And I'm like, dang it. And a lot of times you can't go back and redo something especially if you're painting something, you know what I mean? So there's been a lot of items that I may have wanted to make for you and was out of frame the whole time I was filming and end up can't put it in the video because I just lost all of my footage because I wasn't in frame. So yeah, that's part of filming. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to slow down for a couple of these and show you how easy they are to make. I just simply wrap it around my finger several times until I like the thickness of it, and then take another piece of twine, wrap it right around the middle, and tie a little knot in it, and that's it. And look how cute they are. They're so simple and easy to make, and I just love them. They can actually finish off so many things. Like, if you have a little something, you got a bow, and they're sort of plain in the middle where it all comes together, you can take a little finger bow, pop it on there and it finish. It's a perfect touch, perfect finishing touch. But anyway, that's enough going slow right there. So I went ahead through and put one on all of the rest of them and finished them up. And I am so much happier with them now than I was before. So let me know in the comments, which bows did you like better? Do you like these better? They definitely fit the description of the film, of the uh, video better, the primitive, rustic, shabby, chic look. So let me know which ones you like the best. Now, for DIY number three, this is not wood, but I found this at the Goodwill recently and fell in love with it. You can't really see the price tag here, but I paid $1.99 for it. And on the bottom, it was $15.99 from home. We have a store here in Florida called Home, and it was $15.99 originally. I don't know if it came with the stuff that was in it originally, or if the first owner stuck those things in it. I'm not sure, but I kept them. I said the name of that store was Home. It's Home Goods. Sorry about that. Anyway, I found it at the Dollar, not the Dollar Tree, <laughs> at the Goodwill, and I fell in love with it. I love the ornamental look of the design, 
and I thought it was just a really pretty piece, but I don't really have anything black per se in my house. Everything's so like shabby chic and rustic, but I thought if I painted it and distressed it down, like it would match my decor, and it did. I liked it, but I still, in the end, and you'll see what I'm talking about, there's just something missing. Like I just feel like I could do something else to it, so send me your ideas when you see what's finished. I was also thinking about maybe putting some ribbon around it and tying a bow or something. I don't know. You'll see in just a minute. And I'm not really telling you what I'm doing here because it's pretty self-explanatory. I just took some white Waverly chalk paint and I literally painted the whole thing. I did give it a really good two coats of paint because I wanted to cover up every single tiny piece of that black so that I could distress it only in certain areas. Now, I tried doing the like distress coat on here and it just didn't look right. So I did go ahead and paint the whole thing a couple of times and I got it all really, really good and covered. And you would think that because it's just these little pieces right here, it wouldn't be hard to paint, but I found it very hard to get into all those little nooks and crannies and cover up all of that black like it was not easy <laughs> but I didn't want a whole lot of distressing on this I just wanted enough to sort of bring it all together with my other decor and I think it looked really cute whenever it was done but anyway I gave it my two coats of the white Waverly chalk paint and of course you know I'm going to use my little heat gun to help me do it because I'm so impatient about watching paint dry like it just drives me nuts so I always use my heat gun to sort of help it along sometimes you can't sometimes that's not feasible but I, if I can I do use my heat gun anyway this is just me taking my hand sander and going in and buffing it back down and um, bringing out some of that black that was under there and giving it that sort of distressed, shabby chic look. And I loved the way it turned out when it was done. To cost me hardly anything, I just fell in love with this piece when it was done. And I, I love an ornamental look like that. Like, I love the design of the whole globe part of it. It's so pretty to me. Now, another thing, too, whenever you finish this... Go ahead and take a baby wipe or something and wipe off all of that dust because you're going to have a lot of paint dust on there from where you're sanding it down. So make sure that you take something wet or damp, not really wet. You don't want it wet, wet because you're going to wipe your paint off even though it's dry. But just, you know, wipe off all of that dust. And then I just decided to go ahead back in and fill it right back up with what it had in it. And this was the simplest, easiest thing that I've done for you today. But I wanted to add it in there and see what you thought about it. So make sure you tell me down in the comments what you think about this little piece. I don't even know what it's called. Like, do you know what this thing is called? If you do, tell me down in the comments what it's even called. I don't know what you call it, but I love it. I thought these little fillers were potpourri, but they had no smell whatsoever like I tried to sniff it and there was like no smell it didn't smell like it even ever had anything on it so I thought about getting some oils maybe and dropping it down in there but look how cute it is but it is plain see like it needs a ribbon or something I thought about maybe doing a ribbon like I did on my first piece and adding to it but I was like uh, no I don't know so I ended up just leaving it because I did want your opinion. Like, what would you do to finish this off? Or would you just leave it? Leave it just like it is. I don't know why it looks wopsided. Like, I'm sitting here looking at this as I'm doing my voiceover. And it looks like it's tilted to the side, maybe. I don't know. Look at that. It doesn't look, like, straight. Well, now there it looks straight. I don't know. Maybe it's, a like, an optical illusion. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway... Let me show you my final reveal. These are all of the things that I made for you today, and I love the way everything turned out. I love the primitive, rustic, shabby chic look of it all, and I loved getting back into doing what I love, do, love doing the best, and that's making different DIYs to bring to you. I had 
the absolute best time on my trip. And I met some of the most amazing people. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to show you a picture of the sweetest couple that we met. And I fell in love with them. It's Ann and Tom. And they live up in Vermont, which I don't know if I've ever said on my channel before. But like when I was a little girl, I was always obsessed with Vermont because I've always been obsessed with snow, but I've never seen it snow. I've never seen a snowfall before. And I know in Vermont, it snows a lot, right? So when I found out they were from Vermont and they were so precious, like she's a crafter also, but she does diamond art. I had never even heard of diamond art. I think I had like heard of it before, but I never really paid it that much attention to it but she made some of the most gorgeous pieces for her. She has a um, like a little fall festival coming up really soon. And she sent me some pictures and videos of her work. And oh my goodness, I'm obsessed with it. It is so beautiful. I was trying to talk her into doing like a little YouTube channel. This is Miss Anne. So beautiful, so sweet. And I just fell in love with her. That's her and her husband. He is one tall guy. And just as sweet as he could be, just a gentle giant. And we fell in love with them. Look at this right here. I am obsessed with cardinals. And she made this, and I just love it. I'm going to buy one of these from her because I am so obsessed with this piece. But anyway, I have rambled on and on and on enough. If you are interested in where we went and what we saw, please feel free to add me to your Facebook. It's under Brenda Smith Cochran, C-O-C-H-R-A-N. That is my name. And I would love to have you as a friend on Facebook and show you where we went. There's a couple of different posts on there of where we went. And we just had the best time. And you can see all of the wonderful places and all of the things that we did. But make sure if we don't have any friends in common, make sure you send me a message saying, hey, I saw you on your YouTube channel, and I just wanted to add you as a friend. Because if I get a random person that tries to add me, and we don't have any other friends in common, then I normally don't, because there's so many scammers out there, you know. So send me a little message saying, hey, I'm adding you to Facebook, and I'm happy to add you to Facebook and get to know you. So anyway, I have rambled on and on and on. If you have never been to my channel before, welcome. My name is Brenda, but my sweet grandbabies call me Moner. I have a video every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We always do a live chat. I would love for you to come and join us in our live chat. We have the best time, have the best group of friends that are in there with me. And I have missed you so much. If you are in my live chat right now, I missed you guys like crazy. Anyway, I just wanted to say... Come back and see me next Tuesday at 8 p.m. But for now, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Be blessed. Bye now.